Hello friends, invasive wild birds are a serious threat to agriculture in the United States. They eat grass, grains, and other crops, causing billions of dollars in damage each year. These are the wild bird hunt. Watch to see how the farmers deal with wild birds destroying crops. Please subscribe to the channel to support us right now. The South Texas pigeon became a serious invasive species in the United States after being introduced from Mexico and Central America in the 19th century. This invasiveness is not just only due to its ability to adapt to a new habitat, but also thanks to its rapid reproduction rate and a lack of natural enemies in the area. South Texas pigeons are well adapted to a variety of environments, including urban areas. The ability to reproduce quickly is a remarkable feature. When a female bird can lay two to three clutches per year, each clutch has two to four eggs In particular, the lack of natural enemies in the United States allows them to grow without difficulty. The major challenge facing agriculture in the United States is the damage caused by South Texas pigeons. They prefer to eat many important crops such as wheat, corn, peanuts, and sunflowers, according to estimates by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The total damage they cause to agriculture is about $700 million per year. To control the South Texas dove population, hunts are often held. These hunts are often hosted by nonprofit organizations or government agencies aimed at protecting crops and minimizing the impact of these birds. The hunting process usually involves gathering at predetermined locations, using hunting guns to shoot birds and then collecting the captured birds. South Texas doves are often hunted in field areas, including wheat, corn, and peanut fields. The number of birds hunted annually in the United States ranges from 50 to 100 million, with high concentrations in states such as Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. In addition to hunting, there are other control measures implemented to minimize the impact of South Texas doves. Pheasants are omnivorous birds that can attack many important crops such as wheat, corn, peanuts, and vegetables. Thanks to their ability to eat anything, they cause significant damage to the agricultural industry, costing farmers billions of dollars each year. Pheasants cause damage to crops in a variety of ways. They can directly eat seeds, seedlings, and mature plants. At the same time, the act of trampling or tearing leaves also damages agriculture. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, each year, damage caused by pheasants to crops reaches about $500 million. To minimize the impacts of pheasants, strategic hunting is an effective means. Hunts are often organized by nonprofit organizations or government agencies in the fall when pheasants are migrating.
The hunting methods include using rifles, traps, and hunting dogs. Rifles are the most common method. While traps and hunting dogs are used less frequently, but are still effective. Pheasants often occur in large field areas, such as wheat, corn, peanut, and vegetable fields. This increases the likelihood of encountering pheasants when hunts take place in these areas. Choosing the right location and time is important. Hunters often observe pheasant tracks to determine where they often appear. Hunting in the morning and evening also increases the chance of a hit. The number of pheasants hunted annually in the United States varies depending on environmental conditions and management plans. However, according to estimates by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, about 3 million pheasants are hunted each year. Pheasant hunting is an important part of the strategy to control this bird. The wild snow geese have become a serious problem in the United States as well, as they become invasive, causing extensive damage to crops, pastures, and infrastructure. To solve this problem, the U.S. government has introduced many measures, including hunting methods, According to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, the invasive wild snow goose populations have increased significantly from about 500,000 in 1960 to more than 5 million in 2023. This increase originated from many factors including habitat degradation in the Arctic where snow geese often breed, an increase in food supplies in the United States due to agricultural intensification, and the storage of natural hunting. Hunting has been identified as an effective means of controlling snow goose populations. According to NOAA, in 2023, about 1.5 million snow geese were captured. To be able to sell snow geese, hunters first need to set up fake traps to lure the geese. When geese moves in the sky, they will see and approach this area. Hunters will hide in nearby areas and wait for the opportunity to catch them. As the flock of snow geese approached, the hunters began the process. They will catch one fish at a time. Snow goose hunting skills take a lot of luring. Geese have unique small bodies and are agile, so when they move they are very difficult to aim at. Goose meat obtained from hunting programs contributes to the economic value, reaching about $100 million per year. Now let's look at other ways of how do farmers deal with invasive birds. Pigeons with their large appearance and diverse diet, have become a source of concern for farmers in the United States. This bird not only causes a nascence, but also possesses a potential risk of great damage to the agriculture and crops of many people. Pigeons aren't small creatures, we often see them around the city parks, 
They are large and capable of consuming a significant amount of food at one time. Seeds and grains such as wheat, corn, and oats are their favorites, and this makes them a major threat to farmers' crops. Regardless of whether the crop has just been planted in the ground or is in the growing stage, pigeons do not hesitate to germinate potential opportunities for farmers' crops. Farmers have had to diverse many countermeasures to protect their crops from pigeon intrusion. One of the simplest but effective measures is to use net traps. Net traps help farmers catch pigeons easily and effectively. Additionally, some U.S. states allow pigeon hunting legally. Pigeon hunting is not only a recreational activity, but also a means of controlling the number of the species in the world. This is especially important in areas where pigeons have become so common that they can harm agriculture. The war against pigeons is being waged across American agriculture. Farmers are consistently looking for and applying countermeasures such as net trapping and hunting to protect their crops from the threat of pigeons. With intelligence and creativity, they hope that they can maintain agricultural prosperity and prevent pigeons from becoming a serious threat to this economy. Sparrows, although not known for their flashy appearance, are becoming one of the major disasters for farmers in the United States. This omnivorous bird not only favors seeds, but also enjoys a variety of foods, from grains to fruits and vegetables. Of particular concern to farmers. However, they also have the ability to eat seeds and grains as soon as they are planted in the ground, leaving the crop without a chance to germinate. Sparrows are the most common bird species in the United States and are causing heavy damage to the agricultural industry, especially in planting and harvesting. This is one of the birds that farmers do not want to encounter, not because of their flashy appearance, but because of their seed-eating habits. Knit traps and glue traps have become familiar tools in the fight against sparrows. Placing these traps in areas where birds commonly appear can be effective in persecuting sparrows. Depending on state laws, many places allow sparrow hunting as means of controlling the species. However, regulations and limits need to be followed to protect the sustainability of this bird. Hunting sparrows is one of the accepted control measures for this species in many U.S. states. However, this requires compliance with regulations and limits to protect the sustainability of this bird. may not be on the list of fiercest wars in history. But for farmers in the United States, it is a fierce battle. By combining traditional countermeasures and using advanced technology, farmers hope to protect their crops from the destructive hands of sparrows. It is not a military war, but this war is still taking place on the fields of America. 
quails, despite their small size, they're very attracted to pastures and grain fields. They mainly eat seeds and grains, such as wheat, corn and soybeans. These crops are often targeted by quails, and they may eat them as soon as they are planted in the ground. When precious seeds are eaten by them, farmers' crops can be seriously threatened. Farmers are facing the challenge of controlling quails. Although these birds are small, they can cause great damage to agriculture. Therefore, effective control measures are needed to protect plants and crops. Knit traps and glue traps are commonly used methods to catch quails. However, for this bird, catching wild traps isn't always effective because they can run fast and they can move quickly. Another measure is to grow plants that taste unpleasant to quails, such as chili peppers, lemongrass, and mint. These plants can keep quails away from main crop areas. Finally, using advanced technologies such as drones, motion detectors can help farmers detect and repel quail more effectively. Drones are capable of scanning large nets, looking for areas where quail often appear. This helps farmers understand the situation and can take appropriate control measures. Thanks to the combination of technology and traditional methods, farmers have the opportunity to more effectively control the number of quails that harm their crops and agriculture. However, this still requires patience and regular care to ensure that birds do not cause serious damage to crop yields. However, controlling birds that destroy crops isn't an easy task and requires the coordination of many parties, including farmers, authorities, and communities. Only through cooperation and the use of measures can we successfully deal with the quail threat and protect our agriculture. Canada geese began invading Australia in 1860, when they were brought to Australia by an emigrant from England and released in Melbourne Park. By 1900, Canada goose numbers had increased significantly, with an estimated 1,000 living in Australia. In contrast, snow geese had a similar journey, brought by immigrants around 1880, released in Melbourne Park, and by 1900, Australia had seen about 1,000 snow geese. Currently, the Australian government estimates that there are about 500,000 Canada geese and 200,000 snow geese living in the country. In addition, negative impacts of Canada geese and snow geese occur in urban areas. They pollute the environment by dumping feces and garbage on lawns and streets. Their noisy sound also creates nuisance for the community. In Richmond Park, Canada geese have been an especially big problem. Not only do they have difficulty maintaining the park's green landscape, but they have also become a threat to the safety and livelihood of local people and animals.
Their behavior of attacking people and causing harm to natural ecosystems has forced the Australian government to take timely countermeasures. Field hunting of geese has been proven to be the most effective method of controlling the Canadian and snow geese populations in Australia. Data from Australian government estimates that hunting has reduced the populations of these two goose species by about 20% each year. However, to ensure safety for the community and the environment, the hunting process needs to comply with some strict rules. Using highly accurate hunting tools is an important factor, helping to limit and discriminate shooting and increase the ability to kill effectively. Large open areas in Australia including agricultural areas, river banks, lakes, ponds, parks and nature reserves are open to goose hunting. This is to control and minimize the negative impact of goose populations on the environment and the communities. To obtain a hunting license in Australia, individuals need to meet certain conditions, including being above 18 years old, having completed hunting safety training, possessing a hunting license, and having a hunting license issued by the Australian government. This is important to ensure those who participates in hunting activities to have adequate skills and understanding of hunting safety. Wetlands in Australia often see significant presence of Canada geese, including sites such as Macquarie Wetlands located in southern New South Wales, Coorong Wetlands in southern South Australia, and Kolola Wetlands in southern New South Wales, eastern Queensland state. These sites are not only important for Canada geese breeding, but also important for the migration in the Australian context. Australian hunters often use small boats to access swamp areas, where geese are abundant. When they discovered a flock of geese, they approached gently and used hunting tools to carry out the hunting process. The shot geese will be harvested and brought back for processing. Each year, about 100,000 snow geese and 200,000 Canada geese in Australia are targeted for hunting, which is a significant number that helps alleviate pressure from goose populations, which are down about 20% annually. The Australian Swamp Rat is a rodent native to North America that has invaded this country quickly and strongly, originating from their introduction to Australia in the 19th century. For ornamental purpose and hunting, swamp rats adapted well to their new environment and began to reproduce at an astonishing rate. Swamp rats commonly occur in wetland areas such as swamps, lakes, rivers, and ponds, as well as riparian areas, grasslands, and forests.
According to Australian government and estimates, the swamp rat population currently reaches about 100 million, accounting for about 80% of the world's total. This impressive figure has created many problems for the Australian government. The swamp rat, an omnivorous species, has caused many negative consequences for the Australian swamps. They can eat grass, trees, and many other types of plants, leading to the degradation of vegetation, affecting biodiversity in the area. And at the same time, they can also prey on native prey such as birds, frogs, and fish, causing a significant decline in native animal populations. In addition, their excrement and waste in the swamp also pollutes the environment, affecting water quality. To control the situation, the Australian government has introduced a number of measures. However, it is still a big challenge to maintain the ecological balance of the swamp and protect its biodiversity. Hunting swamp rats in Australia is considered the most effective way to control the population. Although expensive and difficult to control large populations, it remains an important method of minimizing marsh rat invasions. Swamp rat hunting in Australia is often carried out by professional hunting teams, using various types of hunting equipment, these hunting parties often focus on swamp, grassland, and forest areas, where swamp rats often live and migrate. To have the right to hunt swamp rats in Australia, participants need to comply with certain conditions, including being aged 18 or above, completing hunting safety training, having a hunting license, and especially the hunting license issued by the Australian government should be established. This license is valid for one year and requires application and payment of prescribed fees. According to Australian government and estimates, every year about 20 million So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below, plus don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.